Hi, my name is Katrina King, and I'm the Worldwide Strategy Leader for Content Production at AWS. And today I'm going to walk you through our content production section of our booth at IBC. So this year at IBC, we're making a movie. And this is our star, Claudia. And this is our set. So we're filming Claudia here with a Blackmagic camera. And then if you come over here, I can show you what's really happening. This is a DIT cart, and it was provided by Mission Digital in the UK. And what we're showcasing here is rapid camera ingest. This is an other world computing jellyfish device. It's an M2 NVMe based network attached storage device, and it can saturate up to 100 gigabit a second connection. We're also showcasing Packet Fabric's bandwidth as a service. So once fiber is laid to a soundstage, Packet Fabric provides a layer that allows that bandwidth to be leased to a production for run of show. So we're uploading the files to simple storage service, and then a Lambda function is triggered that downloads and moves the files to a PIX store from Pixit Media. We're also, in partnership with QTake, streaming from the camera directly to the cloud. And we'll see that a little further on down in the demos. So the next step in our production is editorial. And we're running Adobe Premiere on an EC2 instance. Also, in partnership with Streambox, we are able to attach this reference monitor to the instance, allowing the editor to get a full picture from the cloud. Next up is pre-visualization. So we're running Unreal Engine on an EC2 instance, and we're creating a backplate that we're going to composite in in the next step of our tour. Next up is 3D compositing in VFX. Here, we're running Flame on an EC2 instance. And again, in partnership with Streambox, we're able to connect a reference monitor to the instance. And what we're doing here is we're compositing the plate we created in the Unreal Engine to our image. We're also conforming. And once it's conformed, we pass it over here to Baselight for color grading and finishing. And so here, we do our final color pass, and then we master it. And then it's passed over here to Colorfront for Master QC. And here's the cool part. This is our Cloud Studio Management section. Here, we're running Moxion. And the really cool thing about that is that all of these other demos are connected to Moxion so that the director can have an over-the-shoulder view for real-time collaboration. So what we're looking at here is actually the editorial workstation we saw a moment ago. And the entire thing is managed in Arch Platform. So Arch Platform deploys the studio in the cloud, and all of these instances are running in a single VPC that is being managed by Arch Platform. All of the media is stored on Pixit Media's Pix store, allowing everything to be integrated and interconnected. And once everything is finished, it's passed off to media supply chain to go further down the media life cycle. Hi, my name is Ian McPherson. I'm the worldwide strategy lead for media supply chain and the archive, as well as the head of our data science and analytics IIC. And I want to spend a few minutes talking about our demos here today at IBC. So we start out over here on the right, where we're looking at an archive migration ingest workflow where content's coming in from legacy archives into the cloud. It's being analyzed with AIML, and rich metadata is being created to describe that content. Then we're using third-party technology from Atelier to deduplicate that content to make a more efficient storage and a more efficient retrieval of that content based on the metadata. We move over here, and this is the media to cloud demonstration where we're showing how AIML can enhance the metadata creation and descriptive metadata that goes with that video content. One of the enhancements we're showing this year is the addition of Amazon Neptune, which is a graph database. And we can start to map the difference and the similarities in content, as well as the relationships between two content types or actors or different metadata terms. This is going to make retrieval of that content easier. It's also going to make personalization of that content more effective. So we move over to this side, and we move into live workflows. They're coming in, being ingested into the cloud. We're monitoring the quality of those streams using Telestream IQ monitoring. We're running this content through Nomad for both content QC as well as syndication, and then prepping that content and packaging it. And that content can then be delivered to both a direct-to-consumer application as well as played out through the broadcast workflows you'll see behind me. Finally, we move over to the left, where we see a, a demonstration of an integrated media supply chain based on EventBridge, which allows us to have an event-based or data-based media supply chain. So in this instance, we're using Orcus, which is a management and integration uh, orchestration framework. 
and we're integrating several different applications so that the vendors who participate in that workflow, as well as the content owner and any managed service provider that might come into play, can all share in status and visibility into the supply chain to better coordinate and better inform customers about the content in status and its likely delivery. So with that, we're now able to take content directly into the cloud and do a seamless end-to-end -end content creation, localization, and packaging for downstream applications. Hi there, my name is Jamie Dumo. I'm the Worldwide Strategy Leader for Broadcast and for uh, Direct-to-Consumer here at AWS. So at IBC this year, we are putting a lot of effort and focus on providing demonstrations that our customers have been wanting and at which our partners ca uh, can actually support and actually drive forward for success. So what we have first starting with it comes the broadcast, we're doing live remote production. And uh, as such, what we are actually showing is what our customers have been asking for over the past 12 months. And so as a part of that, we actually partnered up with a number of great, uh, uh, great uh, folks who are here at the show as well. So we have Everts and Simply Live. Here's where we're talking about what you need from a replay point of view. Um, we have uh, TELUS Alliance with us. They're handling everything from the intercom and tally point of view. We have Grass Valley and VizRT. Both are providing their vision mixing so that we can actually have the heart and soul of the production showroom uh, and demonstrating. And then we have Ross for production graphics and Sienna for uh, signaling and for um, signal processing and routing. And so as a part of that, what you see here is we really want to show that even with the internet con connectivity here, uh, at IBC that we can do a full production. Uh, and so for that, what we have here is we have two different feeds that are coming in. We have one feed that's a remote, and then you'll see a camera right on the top there. So we actually have it for what's happening here at the show as well. And again, it's just, just so that we can do things um, that uh, allow for the different changes with it and have all the different angles. So we have multiple angles being co contributed into the cloud, being able to cut uh, between it all. Um, and I think some of the, the real things just to show on this is that um, with the great work that our partners have been doing with advanced graphics, things that can be also tied in with data driven. So those things that would have been data extracted through ML purposes um, and enriched along the way. Um, we're showing that kind of all in action. With this though, so once you have the uh, live production, so therefore it's production can be done anywhere. Some of the benefits to it is that you don't necessarily have to travel your staff keep them on the road during, let's say, any type of uh, a football season, baseball season, sport, any type of the fact for sporting, you can actually choose the fact of who do you want to actually have travel, and the other ones are the fact to have and be able to do this actual type of remote production, either from a joint facility or even at home, depending on their internet connectivity. So with that, the power of this though, we were like, which you would have seen on some of the earlier demos, we're actually showing an end-to-end -end workflow uh, here with, with AWS, and so, live production now, once we have a final signal, well, that's all great. Now we're gonna go into broadcast and from the play out and dis next gen distribution and showing how we can actually now take the great quality here and get it out to the consumers. So as we move over this way, yep, we'll move over this way. So here we are talking about uh, play out and next gen delivery. Right? And so from a playout point of view, we're taking our live signal and we're actually contributing it to four different playout partners that we have. So we have Amagi, BC Next, Grass Valley, and Imagine Communications. And again, uh, we actually ask these partners to come join us here um, for, this, uh, for this show, uh, only because they have a lot of numerous wins lately. So they've been actually uh, really helping our customers um, to be able to uh, reinvent themselves. As a part of it too, we have M2A Media. So what's great about M2A Media is that everything that's playing out from the actual uh, play out, M2A Media is handling those things you would do for entitlements, rights, sports rights. What are easy, intuitive ways in which case you can actually turn on and off streams um, either through APIs, very intuitive uh, operational panel, um, so that again, you can now think about different ways in which you write your contracts now, because this can be all automated into one unified system. And then finally, as we move past M2A Media, what we're showing also is all the different ways that you can distribute, 
right? Um, so if satellite is still a requirement, that's fine and fantastic. We're talking, uh, we're showing uh, AWS Elemental stat mux in the cloud. So one of the benefits of that is that you can mux in the cloud and minimize the egress uh, cost that you might assume if you had to bring everything down on-prem just to do that same function. Because it's an AWS media service, you have all the built-in resiliency and security that any, uh, any of our other services have. Next, we also have Cinemedia and we have Harmonic. So what Cinemedia and Harmonic are doing is taking traditional uh, broadcast and distributing it in a non-traditional way. So what are they doing is they're taking the high quality feeds that are come out of our playout partners and they actually segment it up and they're doing CDN distribution uh, and mimicking to the fact of what we're demonstrating to a head end, which case puts the signal back together again to make it look traditional again. The bonus to that one is as customers are looking to, um, to diversify uh, the means that they distribute and potentially replace satellites, there's a whole bunch of downstream infrastructure when it comes to affiliates and head ends. The beauty of the fact of what so, like uh, Cinemedia and Harmonic are doing is that the head ends don't have to change anything they're doing. They can be sent to one RU uh, rack, a piece of kit for put into the rack, and now you have for the fact all, all the logic that is in there that be able to take those pools, that need, the media that it pulls from CDNs, and again, put it back together from a traditional distribution point of view. And as we, again, that we're doing a whole end-to-end -end, uh, aspect with this, so what you see here, uh, we are having the playout that comes out of this from live, which is also doing a uh, SCSI insertion for ad, dynamic ad triggering, is what now feeds into direct-to-consumer. So let's go take a look at that. So with direct-to-consumer, what we're really looking at here is that we want to be able to stream, secure the stream, monetize on that stream, and customize on the stream. So we're doing a combination between AWS solutions as well as some great partners like SpringServe, LiveLike, and NextPlayer. Um, so when we talk about the live stream itself, that's what we have, like I said, coming in from, from Playout that we have built on our open source code that you can pull anytime and actually spin up an OTT channel in minutes. From there as well, we're using SpringServe, so those SCSI triggers I told you that was embedded uh, within the Playout that's actually triggering through Media Tailor in order to have that dynamic ad insertion. Next, we move into security, securing the stream. We are just to release a, a, a new feature, or excuse me, a new uh, solution that allows for secure, securing your streams at the edge. So what does that mean? Getting away from cookies and actually going with token authorization that allows for the empowerment to make sure you can have control and make sure there's no piracy of your streams. And so, yeah, the variety of ways that you can apply the configuration of that token, the real benefit to it is that it's within the URL. So what does that mean? That means is that it's backwards compatible. So by putting that in there, you can start securing your streams at any point. Any devices that might be older, they can still consume the streams the way they have. So there, that's the benefit for the backwards compatibility. Then finally, as, as a part of that last piece, uh, some of the other value statements when it comes to um, the securing uh, media at the edge is that it can um, be deployable in minutes. So because this is actually available um, all out of the box with this, it can be deployed within 10 minutes. So in 10 minutes, you can secure your streams. Because once you secure it, then you can really take advantage of the aspect of monetizing because you know who's watching, right? So from a monetization point of view, um, we are looking, we're working with um, Aceto One. So Aceto is our partner, Aceto One the, is their SaaS solution, which is really great because um, what they provide is a customizable uh, methodology to create a premium catalog experience like you would find like on Netflix. And because of the way that they understand how to monetize, the bonus to it is, is they understand how to treat live differently than they would with AVOD as, a vo as opposed to SVOD with it. The other power to uh, Aceto uh, with it is that they have their own marketplace. So as a customer, if I'm like, I want to set up uh, uh, an OTT catalog, I want to select, I want to launch this service, you can do it fairly quickly with a Aceto one. And then you can also be like, but you know what? I also need DRM, I need analytics. Um, I need a player, there's all these things I need. With Aceto's Marketplace, um, all the uh, third-party partners that they work with, they, they're in the marketplace because they have already done those integrations. So from the customer side, it literally is a click and play for that establishment. So again, it's allowing our customers to run faster. 
And then finally, after you're having that smart uh, aspect with modernization, then you get to the fact of customization. Uh, and that's what the fact of what we're doing with uh, Live Like. So uh, the fun part with Live Like is that you can have start having those interactions, which is actually what you're seeing here. Think about trivia, polls, uh, you know, uh, overall stats, emojis, uh, chats. That's also really important as well. So again, if you have the audience and you keep them uh, and you keep them engaged through interactivity, they stay longer. Um, the uh, uh, really good part of this as well, because when you are doing online chats that have that available, sometimes people can say things that are inappropriate. So, uh, so the bonus to it is that Live Like does offer two different mechanisms for moderation. They can do it uh, through uh, automation, so therefore using a little ML logic with that one, or they do it manual. So therefore, customers have a few different ways to ensure that the chats that are happening in line there are good for a very broad audience. And so as a power of that, that's what we're very happy to be able to do this end-to-end uh, -end workflow, all the way from content production through supply, supply chain to uh, live production and uh, live playout distribution over here to D2C. Um, and I thank you for your time.